Hello, in this video, I'm going to go over an example from section 6.4, and this is a good example of when you should use the central limit theorem and when you don't need to use the central limit theorem. And it's also a good example for practicing using our calculator skills. It reads, when women are finally allowed to become pilots of fighter jets, engineers needed to redesign the ejection seats because they had been originally designed for men only. The ejection seats were designed for men weighing between 140 pounds and 211 pounds. Weights of women are now normally distributed with a mean of 163 pounds and a standard deviation of 46 pounds. Complete parts A through C below. Part A says if one woman is randomly selected, find the probability that her weight is between 140 pounds and 211 pounds. For this type of question, what you always want to do first is draw a diagram. So we have normally distributed data. So it's going to follow the curve that we have here. We know that the mean of the data is 163 pounds. So that'll fall in the middle of our diagram. And we're trying to find the probability that one individual's weight is between 140 pounds and 211 pounds. So this is not drawn to scale, but it's going to give us an idea of what we're looking at. I'll draw 140, 211, and I'm going to label um, this mean here is mu. And I'm going to shade the area in between. This area represents a probability. The probability that an individual x value is between 140 and 211. I know that it's one individual x value because our problem says one woman. So because we're finding the probability for normally distributed data of one individual being between certain values, we do not need our central limit theorem. So this is no central limit theorem. Why? Because we're just finding the probability for one woman. Now, lucky for us in our calculator, we have a feature that makes this a fairly quick problem. We can use our normal C D F and the C D F is for a cumulative distribution function and we're talking about normal data here and you're always going to put a lower limit an upper limit your mean and your standard deviation in the problem and I'll show you how to do this in your calculator but I figured we'll just write it out now so we have normal C D F the lower limit is where our data starts being shaded. So no shading, no shading, no shading until we get to 140. The upper limit's the edge of the shaded region, which is 211. Our mean is 163. And if we read the problem carefully, it does say the standard deviation is 46 pounds. Now we can put that in our calculator. So you can see on the right side of the screen, I have my calculator. It should look just like yours. And I'm going to press second VARS. And the reason I do that is because second lets me access these blue writing up here. And we're talking about distributions. So I'm getting to the distribution section. And I'm going to go to normal CDF. You can either scroll down and press enter, or you can just press the number two. Make sure it's CDF and not PDF. And you want to put in the numbers that we wrote down. So 140 is the lower limit. The upper limit is 211. The mean is 163. And the standard deviation is 46. Just double check your numbers. And you can paste, press enter. You might have to press enter again. And we get 0 0.54310.54. 3, 1 if we're going to four decimal places. And what that represents is the probability that an individual selected is between 140 and 211 pounds.
look at part B. It says if 34 different women are randomly selected, find the probability that their mean weight is between 140 pounds and 211 pounds. So this time we're finding the probability that the mean of your sample is between 140 and 211. So the probability that their mean weight, mean weight, that's your cue that we're going to use our central limit theorem in this problem. So that um, makes a small difference in how we do the problem. But some things are going to look very similar. So our distribution, still a normal distribution. The mean is still the same mean. It was 163, except for that represents the mean of the sample mean. So we say mu of x bar, sub x bar. We're still shading the region from 140 to 211. Not to scale, it's just a sketch. But one thing that is different in this problem is the standard deviation. In this problem, in the original problem, we're told that the standard deviation is 46. Since we're fine using a probability based on the mean weight here, not just individual, we're going to find sigma sub x bar. So what is the standard deviation of the sample means? And the formula for that is you're going to take sigma and divide it over the square root of your sample size n. So in our problem, we have um, 46 over the square root of n, and n is 34. You can go ahead and calculate that, but we're going to use our calculator just like we did in part A, and you can actually just type this information right into your calculator. So when we're finding the probability that our mean is between 140 and 211 pounds, we're still going to do um, normal CDF of 140, our lower limit, to our upper limit, 211. Our mean is still the same at 163. But for our standard deviation, we're going to say 1, I'm sorry, we're going to say 46 divided by the square root of 34. And we can type it into our calculator just like that. I'll show you. So once again, we'll say second distribution. We'll go to normal CDF. I'm just going to press 2 this time. Our lower limit's 140. Our upper limit is 211. Our mean is 163. But now for our standard deviation, we're going to have 46 divided by square root, which is second and then x squared, of 34, close your parentheses, and then press paste. And enter again. If you're a person who does not have um, a menu like I did on your calculator, instead of every time where I went down to the next row, you'll just put a comma, and comma is right above the number seven. So then on your screen, you should have something that looks like what I have right here. So when I press enter, I get 0.9982 when rounded to four decimal places. So let's write that out. The answer is 0 0.9982. So the probability that for 34 different women being randomly selected that their mean weight is between 140 to 211 is pretty certain at 0 0.9982. For part C, we're asked when redesigning the ejection seat, which probability is more relevant? Well, there's only one person sitting in the ejection seat. So the probability for an individual is, prob is probably more important in that case. So use that information and choose the best choice based on that. Hope you found this helpful. Please reach out if you have any more questions.